Hey everybody, today we're just gonna talk about um, how do we measure the or how do we do the pulse rate paradoxes and the topic will not be complete until we talk about cardiac tamponade as well. So this is not a talk about cardiac tamponade but basically how to do the pulse rate paradoxes but we're just gonna briefly talk about cardiac tamponade as well. One thing you have to remember is that the cardiac tamponade is a clinical diagnosis. You can do a right heart cath with equalization of pressures in all four chambers. You can do a fancy echo um, with respirophasic changes across the mitral and tricuspid valve, which can suggest patient might be having tamponade. But again, as I said, it is a clinical diagnosis. It is gonna be your clinical judgment and examination, signs and symptoms that will make a diagnosis of cardiac tamponade. So basically what happens in the cardiac tamponade, we know there is accumulation of fluid around the heart, in, around the, inside the pericardium and around the heart. And this kind of pushes the chambers of the heart and cause filling defect or a filling problem. Basically what happens is when a patient inspire or take a deep breath, the intrathoracic pressure goes down. There's more space in the mediastinum so that the heart can relax and accommodate the blood that's coming back from the SVC and IVC. As this blood comes back, it goes into the right ventricle and the right ventricle filling goes up. So now this right ventricle is a thin wall chamber. It has to expand to accommodate this amount of blood that's coming in. And as we talked about, if it is a constrictive pericarditis or if it is cardiac tamponade, there is a pressure outside of the RV not allowing to expand in this direction. The only way the right ventricle can accommodate the amount of blood coming towards it from the right atrium is to push the septum towards the LV. So what happened now is the RV is filling up but at the expense of decreased filling in the LV. So the RV is taking up the space from the, for the LV and the LV filling goes down. When the LV doesn't fill, it does not eject that amount of blood and you have what we call like a hypotension. So the classic back striate that we all know is falling BP, rising JVP, and muffled heart sounds. One can question why does that, this does not happen in the restrictive cardiomyopathy? Because the physiology is the same, the, the myocardium is all thickened and it is not relaxing. But you have to know it is a global infiltrative disease where the septum, RV, LV, everything is thickened so what basically happens now is when the blood comes back, comes from the right atrium into the vent right ventricle or from the left atrium into the left ventricle, both of these chambers are stiff and they cannot expand in any direction, neither in the septal direction or in the free wall. So what happens, a classic sign you will see on the echo is the huge atria. So the LV and RV will be small and the atria will be huge. And that is something that they can test you on the echo board. So now with this background, we're gonna come back to how do we may do the, the pulse of paradoxes. And um, I can assure you about 90% of us, and I will include myself as well, um, don't know how to do the pulse of paradoxes. We, it's very nicely written in the textbook. We can explain it to others, to the residents and the medical students, but when it comes to practically do it, we all do it wrong. And I, and again, I include myself as well uh, till my second year of fellowship. So let's see how do we do the pulses paradoxes. On the left side, you see this fake mammometer, which is kind of an old way or you can use a pressure cuff um, with, with the numbers 
uh, but it has to be a manual one to kind of tell you what's the pressure are so we have x axis axis and y axis this way is the waveform or the pressure going this direction and these are the pressure readings so the easiest way and again i'm going to re stress that is you don't have to have patient hold his breath take a deep breath stop breathing and all that imagine somebody is in tempo night and you the last thing that you are asking him to do is to hold his breath so he the patient is already hypotensive he's diaphoretic and 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 you want to prove that by holding asking him to hold his breath just so that you can do the pulse paradoxes this is now how practically the pulse paradoxes is done so the easiest way to start you put a blood pressure cuff on the arm put your stethoscope on the brachial artery and you inflate the cuff let's say for example if the patient's blood pressure is somewhere around 100 or something you can go up to 140 so once you are up to 140 then you start releasing the air and you carefully listen to the to the sound the cortical sound here in this line you see the yellow worms this is the normal blood pressure with somebody not in tamponade so as you lower the blood pressure cuff and carefully hear with the stethoscope on the brachial artery at a pressure of 120 what you will hear is with each beat there will be a cortic of sound which will be hush 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 and then you can keep going down at when you reach 80 then the sound will go away so that's a normal measurement of blood pressure so let's see what happens in the pulses paradoxes so exactly the same thing you inflate the cuff up to 140 you bring the blood pressure cuff down to 120 and now you will listen to the cortic of sound and this red worm is somebody in, in pericardial tamponade having pulses paradoxes so now in this case if i have to draw this line like this i'm gonna move this up a little so basically what will happen is instead of that cortic of sound with each heartbeat it will be on alternate heartbeat or when the patient will take a deep breath the blood pressure will go down and you will not hear that cortic of sound so it will be something like whoosh 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 so there will be a pause between each beat or there will be a pause where you will not hear the cortic of sound and that is because you see the your line is kind of cutting these peaks so now you will put it down and that's going to be your top number and then you keep going down carefully listening to the heart sounds till you reach this number which is 100 now if i have to draw a line it's going to cross through all these peaks so now what will happen is you will hear the sound again hush 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 so this is the difference at 120 you were hearing after a pause like hush 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 now at 100 you are hearing at hush 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 so you will note that number down and then you minus that and 20 is your pulses paradoxes obviously you can keep going down and you can also measure the diastolic pressure as well so this is how easy it is it does not require you to look at the patient's chest it does not require you to ask the patient to hold the breath all you need to do is to know this graph know the physiology and just close your eyes drop the blood pressure in the blood pressure cuff slowly and look for these sounds i hope this is helpful and next time when you have a patient 
with tamponade you can even teach one of our attendings how to do that pulsus paradoxus have a good day thank you